another day, another video. In this exciting second to last installment of Chapter 17's coverage of additional aspects of aqueous equilibria, I'm going to teach you about additional aspects of aqueous equilibria. But first, I'd like to begin by sharing a humorous college freshman of the day from quickmeme.com. There are no stupid questions. Challenge accepted. <laughs> and now, an interesting chemistry fun fact of the day. D-tubocurine is an alkaloid that was isolated from the bark of the South American climbing vine Gondrodendrum tomentosum by J.D. Ducher in 1945. It is the active ingredient in curare, a poison first used by South American natives to coat hunting arrows to paralyze their prey. At one time, this skeletal muscle relaxant was used as an adjunct to anesthetics, but it has since been replaced by safer drugs. Interestingly, the Ian Fleming novel from Russia with Love ends with Rosa Klebb poisoning James Bond with tetrodotoxin. In the ensuing Dr. No, Bond is treated for curare poisoning, but survives nonetheless. Was that fun? I thought so. Here's today's lineup. After this presentation, or series of presentations from this video and the next, which will cover sections 4 through 6 of chapter 17, you should be able to derive an expression for saturated solution solubility product constant, or KSP. Interconvert between KSP, molar concentration, molar solubility, and mass solubility. Determine and calculate how the common ion effect affects solubility of a saturated solution. Determine and calculate how pH changes affect the concentration of a saturated solution of acid or base. And determine the ion concentration at which a solution will precipitate. Please take note that we'll skip section 7. That's the lineup. Let's get started, beginning with solubility equilibrium. Now, thus far, we've considered acid-base equilibria that are homogeneous, that is, where all of the reactants and products are in the same phase, liquid, solid, gas, or aqueous. Now we'll consider equilibria in which the reactants and products are in different phases, or heterogeneous equilibria. Because the reactants are solids that are in equilibrium with their aqueous or gaseous products in these examples, we can say that these reactants are in states of solubility equilibria. Such reactions are called saturated solutions. When a solvent contains as much dissolved solute as it can hold, it's called a saturated solution. You've probably experienced this with chocolate milk mix where you have so much in the bottom of it that not all of it can dissolve thoroughly and you end up with this sort of chocolate turd in the bottom. Yes, I did say turd. Saturated solutions, turd-tastic. Under certain conditions, it's possible to form solutions containing more than the maximum amount of dissolved solute. These are called supersaturated solutions. They're cool because you can add a tiny solute crystal called a seed crystal and cause the rest of the solute to rapidly precipitate. This is called crystallization and brings us to a cool YouTube video that I'm going to show you right now. Now, saturated solutions exist in equilibrium with their dissolved ions, as in the case of barium sulfate, this example right here. You can see that barium sulfate, a solid, is in an equilibrium with its individual ions, barium cation and sulfate anion, that are in aqueous states. As with acid-base reactions, as well as all equilibrium reactions in general, when a solid is in an equilibrium state with its dissolved ions, the resulting equation also has an equilibrium constant. For this type of system, we call it KSP, the solubility product constant. For this barium sulfate system shown here, KSP is equal to the individual concentrations of both of the products multiplied together. Notice, as I've stated before, that barium sulfate, the reactant or solid, is omitted from the KSP because it is a solid, and we don't include those in K expressions. You can add then KSP to the lineup of all the other Ks we've discussed, such as KC, KP, KA, KB, KW, and probably some others as well. This takes us to a wondrous problem. What is the KSP expression for calcium chloride? I invite you to attempt this on your own, and then if you like, you can click the link here to a separate video, in which I'll show you how to do it on the board. Next, what is the KSP expression for sodium sulfate? I invite you to attempt this on your own, and then if you like, you can click the link here to a separate video, in which I'll show you how to do it on the board. Now, to solubility versus KSP. It's important to realize that a compound's KSP, its solubility product constant, and its solubility are not the same thing. 
A compound's solubility is the amount of it that dissolves when we saturate a solution with it. This is usually expressed in moles per liter for molar solubility or in grams per liter for mass solubility. However, we can use KSP to interconvert between solubility as the following figure shows. You can interconvert between KSP and molar concentration by using the solubility equilibrium. You can use the empirical formula to interconvert between that and molar solubility, once again totally different from KSP. And you can use the formula weight to interconvert between that and mass solubility. Confused? No problem. Let's do some examples. What is the molar solubility of silver chloride in water? The solubility product constant for silver chloride is this number at 25 degrees C. As per usual, you can attempt this on your own, and then if you like, click the link here to a separate video in which I show you how to do it on the board. Next, the solubility of lead 2 chloride is this number. What's the KSP of lead chloride? Similarly, you can attempt this on your own, and then if you like, you can click the link to a separate video here in which I show you how to do it on the board. Next. The solubility of manganese hydroxide is this number. What's the KSP of manganese hydroxide? And lastly, the concentration of iodide ions in a saturated solution of lead to iodide is blank molar. The solubility product constant of lead iodide is that number. If you like, once again, you can attempt this on your own and then click the link here to a separate video in which I show you how to do it on the board. That's the end of this video. Please stay tuned to the next video, which I'll finish teaching you additional aspects of aqueous equilibria. In particular, how common ions affect solubility. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.